Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your MySQL tutorial series. Now, as we go through this series, I'm going to be throwing words at you and key terms, and if you don't know what these terms are, you're going to get lost. That's because when you start with databases, there is a ton of terms that you need to become familiar with. And if you're not, you're not going to be able to keep up with the important information where those terms are considered prerequisites. Because of that, I'm taking a couple videos just to talk about terms and go through them all, so that way we're clear on what is what. So the very first term is data. Now data, my friend, is just information. Don't make it too technical or fancy or, you know, data, oh, we collect data, it's fancy. But really, it's just information. When you take a bunch of information and put it all together, you get what's known as a database. So data gets put into a database. Now how do we work with this data? We need something known as a database management system. This is essentially a software that allows us to work with all of this data. Now MySQL is an example of a database management system. Now if you took every single database management system, a subset of those would be called relational database management systems. So think, this circle represents database management systems. Inside of that, we have relational database management systems. Now MySQL is also an example of a relational database management system. So if we had MySQL right here, not only is it a relational database management system, but it's just a general database management system. And that's pretty clear from the name because they both have DBMS in the title. But not all databases are relational database management systems. We still have all of these databases over here. But what's the difference? Well, we're not going to focus a whole lot on these databases right now, but these ones, they are what's known as relational. And all that means is that they present our data in tables. A really cool word for table is relation. Now what is a table? You can think of a square, and within the square you have what's known as columns. Columns are the headers of the table. The table will also have a name. So we could say this is the membership table. Then the columns are going to list the data we want to store about memberships. We are essentially going to make a table that lists possible memberships for a gym or for a website or anything like that. So we might have, you know, an ID, a title, and then a price. So that's what the columns of this table are. ID, title, and price. Now the other term you need to know is row. Rows are data that we put in to match these columns. But we give actual data, not just categories of data. So we give an actual ID, we give an actual title, and we give an actual price. So for example, we could have the ID of one. The title could be silver. And the price could be $30 or 30 whatevers. That is an example of a row. And we often have multiple rows inside of a table. You can think of the rows as instances of whatever the table is describing. So each row is an example of a membership. And the data it has is the ID, title, and price. You'll often hear a couple of other terms when we're talking about tables. One of those terms is a record. A record is just another name for a row. You'll also hear the term field, which that usually describes one value inside of a column. Or you could also call it a cell. Now some people, when you say field, they think of the whole column. So that can get a little confusing, so I'm not going to use that term a whole lot. But I will use record, and I'll also use the term entry, which is the same thing. You can just think of entering this data as an entry inside of this table. Now when we have a table, sometimes it is appropriate to leave some information out. In this table, we don't really have a good column that we can do this for, but let's just go through it and see what, what that would look like. We could have a, another membership with the ID of 4 and the price of $200. But the title has no value. As you can see, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this membership table because it's important that every membership has a title. But if we had a column such as description, it might make sense to leave some of these blank. So we could say this is the ultimate 
title, but we could leave the description empty. In this situation, you could say this is a null. A null is just an absence of a value. So continuing our list, I'm gonna put that down here. Sometimes that's appropriate, sometimes that's not. It's often a decision you have to make. Does it make sense for this to be null or should we force every single row to have a value for this column? All of these things are part of what's known as database design. Database design makes us ask questions like, what tables do I need? What columns do I put in that table? Do I allow them to be null or do I force them all to have a value? How are these tables connected to one another? How do I enforce the way they're connected? All of that information. Essentially, database design is all about what's known as data integrity. That is actually the term we are going to start with in the upcoming video. So you guys better go check that out. Hopefully all this information was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, click like, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.